period of, of this meeting, we're opening the Bible now to the first chapter of Exodus to begin tonight in a study. It's a lengthy, very lengthy study, and we're trying to compile it into just a, a few nights. <clears throat> Reason I'm doing this, that I believe the revival will go on through Easter and maybe on. We never want to start too much uh, when you're just feeling your way. I'm a great believer in that. Just uh, why I'm here in this revival, I, I don't know. I, I, it's all a mystery to me. When the manager called me this afternoon about the meetings over at Macon, Nashville, and through there, and We've canceled everything out. Some of them at auditoriums we've been trying to get for the past three or four or five years, seating up to many 20,000 people. <clears throat> and the, we left the last meeting, <clears throat> pardon me, at Meridian, and 4,500 inside, and we don't know what was on the outside, standing in the rain and storms and things. we standing out there, and when we left Tallahassee, it was the same way. We couldn't even get a place to put the people, and the Holy Spirit said, Stop. Go home now. Wait, I'm fixing to send you overseas. Well, here I am. I just canceled out seven meetings. Just got through canceling seven meetings, and one of them here in Indiana, Connorsville. One of them in, up in Alberta, Canada. In a big arena there seats 25,000 people that we've been trying to get that arena for some time. And just when we got it and everything just ready to start a nationwide canvas there where we expect maybe 30, 40,000 people, the Holy Spirit said, stop, and then send me here at the tabernacle like tonight. And you have to do what he tells you to do. You say, would you leave a group of people like that to come to a little bitty tabernacle? Well, now, wait a minute. We are serving God. See? Philip left a big revival when he had all Samaria on a move and went out in the desert, Gaza, and stood there to find one man, and never did return back to the revival. Is that right? Up to the desert, Gaza. Found one man, the Ethiopian. He was converted, and then he turned from there. We never did go back to Samaria again, or he had the, the great revival. Now, we are indeed thankful for the leadings of the Holy Spirit. We must go as we are led to go. And I feel very definitely led to, to come here in this meeting to do this. Am I just a little... Oh, excuse me, brother. Here's a couple more, too, Brother Fleeman, if you will. Maybe take them to somebody who doesn't have a Bible. The Old Testament, we're studying in the Old Testament specifically tonight, because we are taking the pattern. Raise up your hands, you who would want one, so they could bring it to you. Bring your Bibles, your pencils and paper and everything, and so you can take down the text. Last evening, we were, stayed a little late last night. I'm going to try my best to redeem that tonight, if possible. I just love the Word so well that when I get into it, I just get lost. I think we went from Genesis over into Revelations last night, all the way through. I just forget about all time and everything else. This is the first time I've had one of these meetings for seven years this next week. I closed the revival at the tabernacle. How many remembers what my farewell sermon was? I don't remember what who is this uncircumcised Philistine trying to defy the armies of the living God? <laughs> that was my farewell sermon at the tabernacle seven years ago last this coming week. All right. My little girl there was two weeks old. I promised God if he would let me stay until she was born, then I'd go. And then I've traveled ever since. Night or two here and there. So... The Lord has blessed us in great ways. Somewhere around a half a million souls have been converted right in our, our meeting. Just think of that. In seven years. It goes to show 30,000 in one day. 
You know, that's marvelous. Every time I think of it, it swims my head. Today, getting letters from down in Africa that said the whole southern Africa is stirred again, ready, just wanting to know the date when we will return. Oh, my. And then the Lord gave the vision and said, in India, the 300,000 people attend one meeting. You write that down and see if that's right or not. Now, so much on that. That goes on the healing, about healing. I'm trying to relax my mind from that now, just to teach the Word. Now, I'm a poor hand at it, but I, I love to tell what I know about it. <laughs> and now, Sunday, we're going to have Sunday morning questions. Any question on the Scripture that you want my opinion of, and so we'll try to bring it through the Bible the best we can. Sunday morning, you bring it before Sunday mornings, up as far as Saturday night, any question on the Scripture, anything that confuses your mind, and it'll be questions Sunday morning. You like that? Yeah. Now, if you got something, you just say, I can't understand how these things could be. Well, bring it. Let's see if we can go together. Maybe all of us together can get it. I'll do my very best to line it up in the Scripture, because I believe it must be scriptural or it isn't legal. Now, last night, we picked up the first beginning of the church, God promising who? Abraham, which is the father of us all. For it was Abraham the promise is made, and only Abraham was the promise made to him and his seed. Is that right? Abraham and to his seed, and his seed was not all of his children, but in Isaac was his seed called. Is that right? And here is the results of Abraham's seed. Jesus Christ is Abraham's seed. And we being dead in Christ take on Abraham's seed and are heirs according to the promise. Amen. Amen. God be blessed. We here who are getting along past when a man woman passes 25 years old. You might as well face it. Your beautiful days are finished. And to think that glorious promise as we're facing the setting of the sun. What is it? Is life finished? Oh, no. Life just hasn't begun yet. <laughs> oh, we're just going. I just wish that there was some way we could settle down to time didn't mean nothing and just stay in like that and get those things out of the Scriptures before the people. They are there, friends. I can prove it by God's Bible and the help of the Holy Spirit that every one of you that's in Christ born again, and one of these days those gray hairs will change, the wrinkles will run from your face, You'll go back to a young man or woman again and live forever with Christ Jesus. I can show you where God proved it in the Bible, showed the shadows and the marks of it and promised it and swore by it that he'd do it. How marvelous. Well, I love my wife and sure more to do now even. I don't know how I could be, but I will. <laughs> will she be my Sure. Be my companion. She'll be no children or nothing, but... The children that we have here on earth be there with us if they're born again. <laughs> That's right. Won't that be marvelous? I used to think, Mom used to tell me, excuse me, Mom, <laughs> that's before you knew better, too. That it would have wings and fly around up there, you know. Well, I like to eat, drink, shake hands with people, fellowship. I thought, oh, my, that'll be finished then. Oh, no. I found out God never did make me an angel. He made me a man. And I'll always be a man and never be an angel. That's an error. God's got angels. Sure, he made angels. And he made turbans with wings. And he made angels without wings. But I used to hear these old songs when I was a sinner and going down places about brown-eyed angel waits me. I thought, oh, my, an angel. <laughs> I found out that's a lie of the devil. Never was such a thing. We are absolutely man and women, and we'll return back to this earth, man and women. That's right. That's God's teaching. When you see those things, it makes you appreciate Jesus Christ. Now, what we're trying to do tonight is throw a shadow 
of what the Old Testament was to the New Testament. And all the old things, the Scripture says, was a type or a shadow of the things that is to come. Now, beautiful lesson tonight, Exodus. We left the children of Israel last night. Israel was called what before he had his name Israel? Who in the class can answer who was Israel before he get, was given that spiritual name? Now, somebody besides a preacher, I see a preacher raise his hand up. All right. Somebody besides one of you preacher. Jacob. That's right. And what, what caused him to receive this spiritual name? Somebody said something. Prevailed with the angel and wrestled with him and said, I'll not let you go until you bless me. Hey, you want a spiritual name tonight? Just get a hold of the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I'm not going to leave this tabernacle till you bless me. Things will look different when you leave. You be just as determined as Jacob was, you'll get a blessing. And watch, he touched his thigh, and Jacob walked different. Hey, Amen. I hope that goes way down home. When you wrestle with God, you walk different after that. Watch. A strong on the other side of the brook, of the little river. He was a strong, great man. Backslidden, though. Away from God. Running from his brother. Running from God. But stout and sturdy. And on the other side of the brook, a limping prince. Thou art a prince before God, for you have power with God as a prince. A limping prince, and he limped all of his life. How God does things. Isn't he marvelous? Now, the patriarchs we left last night in Genesis, where that the last of the four that God gave his promise was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, God's, what was it in Abraham we found last night to the Christian church today? Election. Election. And in Isaac, justification. And in Jacob, grace. You'd have to believe in grace if you read Jacob's life. You'd have to see it was election and calling because all the things that fella did. But yet God had blessed him. God had told him what was going to happen. So he called him. But you notice after he wrestled with this angel, things began to look different. Then when he got before Pharaoh, he said, My pilgrimage has been so many years. God had let him know that he was only a pilgrim. Now, and in Joseph, perfection. Notice three stages of justification by faith. Sanctification through the blood, baptism of the Holy Spirit, then perfection, glorified. The Bible said those who he justified, this is to the spiritual mind, he also glorified. Is that right? He who he justified, then if he justified us, now, we are already glorified in His state. Not he, he will, He has glorified. Say, that's deep, isn't it? But that's what the Scripture says. God told Abraham, I have blessed you, and I have made you a father. Not I will, I have. I have made you, and you'll come to me in an old age. You're going to be saved. And I've already done it. I've already said so. You haven't got nothing to do with it. It's unconditional. God determined to have His church. So every time He made a covenant with man, man breaks His covenant, and He does yet today. Man will always break His covenant with God, but God can't break His covenant with man. So I will. You notice, back there when he told Adam in the beginning, he said, Now, don't do this, and you can do this, and don't do that. Adam turned right around and broke it. 
But then God seeing that he was lost, he said, I will put enmity. I will put enmity between thy seed and the serpent's seed. And he'll bruise the head and or you bruise his, or his head or bruise your heel. Now, I will. When God says he'll do anything, you can look for it to be done. When man says he'll do anything, I don't know about that. But God told Abraham, I will save you and your seed after you. Not only Abraham, but all of Abraham's seed. Unconditional. Say, if you excuse me, I believe I could shout a little. Look. Oh, you just don't realize, people, what it means. Maybe some of you have never thought deep enough to get into it. God has already glorified His church. Those who He justified, He also glorified. In the church, in Christ, if you're justified in Christ, you're glorified in Christ. Already, as far as God is concerned, Jesus said, Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. How could you ever be perfect? But in the sight of Christ tonight, every born-again Christian is perfect. I'm just as perfect in God as Christ was. You are too, every other believer. For it's not my holiness, it's His holiness. God can't accept mine, I have none. But I come in Christ by faith, and by Christ I'm in Him and perfect in the sight of God. Look, by one Spirit, we're all baptized into one body and become members of this body. And Romans 8, 1, there's therefore now no condemnation Amen. to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but the Spirit. And a man that's in Christ Jesus walks after spiritual things. Amen. To the world, it's carnal mind, it's foolishness. But to them that believe, it's everlasting life. Amen. Amen. There you are. Oh, how marvelous. Yes. Then what can harm you? You're in Christ. And just as sure as God raised Jesus from the dead, We'll come in Christ. Amen. 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 Yes, we got to. God's done promised it. For just as sure as that body goes up, I'm in that body. I have to go with it. Now, say so you believe in eternal security, then, Brother Brown. In one way, I do. I believe that the church is eternally secure. The church is, God's already said it would appear before him without spot or wrinkle. The church will. Now the next thing, if you're in the church, then you are secured. If you're in the church. He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Is that right? And listen, here's the man's word about it. Jesus Christ, St. John 5, 24. He, whosoever... He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath, present tense, everlasting life. That's not just from one meeting to another. Everlasting life. And shall not come into judgment or condemnation. Never be cast away. But hath, past tense, passed from death unto life. St. John 5, 24. Jesus said so. I am the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. Your fathers eat men in the wilderness and are dead. But he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life and I'll raise him up at the last days. Amen. That's what he said. Now, there's many that pretend to be in there. There's many that's warring themselves and trying to live right and trying to press in. I don't know about that. But if they are in there, it's just as easy to live a Christian life as it is to live any life. Because you're in Christ and nothing else but just the flow of the Holy Spirit 
lead you and guide you and direct you and why sure you'll make mistakes and fall but you can't stay down because no more than you can make a, a stalk a corn a, a sycamore tree you can't do it Jesus said by their fruits you shall know them you have everlasting life. one of the greatest curses on the church today is fear everybody's scared to death and what's going to happen to what why, Jesus said, even when the fearful sights come, lift up your head and rejoice. For great. Your redemption's drawing now when these things happen. Now, how I took the church through that journey. How back there, even in Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all them, look at the mistakes they had. But God was with them. A shadow. Look at Abraham for a minute. Uh, I, I know I got a lot of Armenian listeners tonight, but I, I, want, I want to clear this up to you. God told Abraham by election and by grace that I am going to bring you to me in an old age. In other words, I'm going to save you. I'm going to take you through. You're going to live a long life. You're going to have a child, not being childish, Sarah, you, bo and you're going to have a child, and in that child, I am going to save the world. Now, before Abraham done one thing to merit it, but he just simply, God called him. That was all. He's just a Chaldean down there in the city of Ur, come down in the valleys of Shinar from the Tower of Babel from idol worship. I think his daddy was an idol worshiper. And I think Laban, after he got down there, proved that he had them idols who were good. He got them if he didn't come out of the Tower of Babel. And out of Ham's people come Nimrod. Nimrod set up the Tower of Babel, which was idol worship. The first idol worship on the earth. Now, and watch that Babel Tower come right on down Babylon, right on down through there and end up over here in Revelation, a Christian religious idolatry, pretending to be Christianity. All John seen her in Revelation 17 admired her, how she set, looked like, and wore the name of Jesus and everything else, and yet persecuted and martyred the saints of the living God. The angel said, come here and I'll show you who she is. That she's a great church that sets over many on seven hills and rules over the earth and so forth. How she drank the blood of the martyrs of Christ. Oh, mercy. People were living in the end time. How many of you people have heard years ago down here, one day was going to have me arrested down here for preaching on that mark of the beast? When I said it, Mussolini, when he first came in power, 20-some-odd years ago, I said, if Mussolini ever goes towards Ethiopia, mark this down, there will never be peace till Jesus Christ comes. Now I said, there will be three great is is isms. Communism, fascism, and um, Nazism. I said, they'll wind up in one ism, and that one ism will dominate the world and will burn the Vatican City. You remember me saying that years and years and years ago. And just exactly that way. I said just before that time comes, that automobiles, which is built that old straight back 20 years ago, 25 years ago, you can remember 20 years anyhow. I said they'll look like an egg. They'll be shaped. That's the vision. Be something on the shape, something like that. And that's the way they'll be. Just before the rapture. But God's just now loosening up the church everywhere, getting in order now so he can get into the rapture. Got to give it rapture and faith before it can go in the rapture. The people are in the spirit of the last days. Just like there was in the days of Noah, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, unconcerned, don't care, walk around, anything else. And these American people is the worst on the face of the earth. Heady, high-minded, incontinent, Fierce and despisers or know it all. If there's any place in the world with my Bible over my heart and God knowing it, I, looking down on me, I know I may have to stand before Him before morning. If I had to say so, the place needs missionaries worse than any place in the world is the USA, the United States of America. The greatest bunch of heathens that I know of anywhere is in America. Heathen means unbeliever. Oh, they believe theology, 
They're so calloused and drugged back to you, you can't speak to them in no way. I can take a man out there never heard of God worshiping an idol and do more with him in five minutes than you could do with a fellow that professes to be a Christian, an old moss back something that's hung along and had a lot of this embalming fluid and jerked into his veins, but in my one of old coal marge down here somewhere like an undertaker establishment. That's right. Set around down there, go in, put, I go in them old, big old churches and put them in the mind of a, a morgue. The spiritual thermometer go a hundred below zero. You have to wade yourself in almost. I'm not saying it for a joke, but it's the truth. Some of them know no more about God. Stand up there and say, well, no, I'll tell you. I believe it's all my goodness. Are you deceiver of man? You stay out of the kingdom of God and teach others to stay out. They put some fluid in, like taking a dead man to a morgue. They, they take all of his blood out and put something in there to be sure that he's dead. Well, that's about the way they do. Take what little religion the people's got or what little faith they got and inject some old and, and theology into them. It kills them worse and keeps them dead. That's all. That's right. Terrible. My. And then they say, oh... I said to a woman, are you a Christian? She said, I'll give you to understand I'm an American. I said, that's not what I asked you. <laughs> Another one comes to the platform said, Brother Bosworth said, are you a Christian lady? She said, well, the very, well she said, I'll give you to understand I burn a candle every night. <laughs> oh, my. Burn a candle every night makes you a Christian. You could burn the whole world for it never help you. Until a burning fire of the Holy Ghost has cleansed your soul from sin, you're still a sinner. It's in the heart. Well, I live in America. Well, that don't make any difference. That don't make anything. God don't respect me because I'm an American. He doesn't expect a German because he's a German or a, or a Poland because he's from Poland. He doesn't respect the African because he's from Africa. God's not interested in Africa, neither is he interested in Germany, or neither is he interested in the United States. God's interested in one kingdom, and that's the kingdom of God. Amen. And men from all nations come into it, and they're born into it Amen. through the seed of Abraham, which was Jesus Christ, Amen. and are heirs according to the promise. Every nation under the heaven is dominated by Satan. The Bible said so. Boy, that put a choking thing, didn't it? <laughs> Satan took Jesus Christ up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Is that right? Amen. And he said, they're mine, and I'll do with them what I wish to, and I'll give them to you if you'll fall down and worship me. Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. See? Jesus knew he was going to fall heir to them kingdoms. Now, over in Revelations, when the ending up of the world, the Bible said, rejoice, ye heavens, and all ye holy prophets, for the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ, and He will rule and reign forever. Amen. Daniel saw Him as a rock hewed out of the mountain, rolling to strike the image in the feet and break it to pieces, and the kingdom of God grew. When Christ takes over in the millennium, there will be no sickness, no sorrow. Every, all the arms will be beat into plowshares and will study war no more. That's all. It will all be over. When Jesus comes, until then, as long as Satan's uh, dominating the nations, then there will be wars and rumors of wars until Jesus comes. Amen. God help us. As I look at you and realize tonight, stand your teaching out of the Word of God, that you're eternity-bound people. Every man and woman, boy and girl in here is going to stand in the presence of Christ someday. I'll have to answer for what I've said before you as his servant. Why would I shun to tell you the truth of God? If God has so honored the word that I have preached till he swept it around the world and honored in the king's palaces and everywhere, and not one time has he said anything but what is just exactly the way he said it. 
then surely he wouldn't let me tell something that was wrong. And I'm saying tonight, my Christian friend, no matter what church you belong to, wherever you are, if you're not into the kingdom of God by the baptism of the Holy Spirit bringing you into the body of Christ, you press in now. For you don't know what hour he's coming. Israel, down there now in Egypt, type of the church being called out. Exodus, the first chapter. Israel, located in Egypt after Joseph. It gives me just exactly about around 30 minutes. I'll try to compile as much of it as I possibly can. Now, they were located in Egypt because of the drought. Isaac going down and taking the patriarchs, and there they lived in Goshen. But Joseph, when he died, a beautiful illustration, he made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and made mention concerning his bones. Listen, if you excuse me, I like to drop. You know, if you read the word right like it's here, it's all right. But you sure miss the meanings of it. The word is written between the lines. Amen. Jesus said, I've hid it from the eyes of wise and prudent and reveal it to babes such as will learn. Amen. These theological seminaries are just like them priests was back there and the high priests and all of them that read the word but failed to see Jesus being the Christ. See what I mean? Now, look at those patriarchs. Why did old Jacob, when he died down there in, in Egypt, he said, don't you bury me here. And he bade Joseph put his hand up on that crippled thigh and swear by God that he would not bury his bones in there. Did you know that? He said, take me back to my homelands and bury me. Look at Job back there, sitting broke out full of boils. And he cursed the day he was born. The oldest book in the Bible is Job. It was written before Genesis. Watch him standing there combing his with a crop sitting out in the back on an ash heap. I preached on that here one time for about three months straight. Some people get it right in town and said, Brother Bill, when are you ever going to get Job off the ash heap? <laughs> and I, I, about him sitting there. That great time of decision. Something had to be done. That zero hour. But you know what happened when we got him off the ash heap? Something happened. That's the way we try to do these revivals. We get the attention of the people pointed to Christ and hold these places to you and get a place you drive it in. Amen. That's the thing. That's the Holy Spirit getting ready. Feel the Spirit moving amongst the people. You know when the kill's ready. Notice there Job sitting there distressed. His wife even turned against him. Walked to her and said, Job, why don't you curse God? And I said, Thou speakest like a foolish woman. He said, The Lord gave, the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Here come the church members down and sat with their backs to him for seven days. What a consolation. Said, Job, you're a secret sinner. You've been sinning. Job knowed he hadn't sinned. Showed what they know about it. So in the distress, a righteous man, God dealing with a saint, he sent a man by the name of Elihu. And Elihu didn't accuse him only of accusing God. But Ella, you told him, said, Now, Job, you've watched all these things. He said, Now there's coming a just one who's going to stand in the breach between the sinful man and the holy God. And then will that man, if they will go to the grave to mourn for, and you perceive it not, then will he rise. Then when Job heard that, he stood on his feet. Ma, the lightning splashed, the thunders roared. What was it? The prophets got back into the channel of God again. Ma, his eyes come open. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Look, 4,000 years before he come on the earth. I know my Redeemer liveth. Continuation liveth. And at the last days, the last 2,000 years, he'll stand up on the earth, though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another. There you are. When he got ready to die, I said, Bear me right over here in Palestine. Along came Abraham with a promise. Sarah died. He buried her right near Job. Bought a parcel of ground and buried her. 
When Abraham died, he slept with Sarah. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac died. He slept with Abraham. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob died way down in Egypt. He said, don't bury me down here. Amen. Swear that you won't bury me. <laughs> here, Take my bones and bury them up there with my father. Why? Wow. Why? Wow. That's not written, brother. It's in between the lines. Joseph, when he died, said, now you put my bones here in a casket, but don't you bury me here. Don't you bear me down here. You take me up there and bear me. Up in the promised land. Bear me up there. Why? I said, God's going to visit you someday. I'm leaving my bones here to represent something. Just as Joseph left his bones, so did Jesus leave an open tomb. Amen. Every old Hebrew beat across the back, worry and war, stagger by there, and all those Egyptians look over and see that little old casket. I suppose they looked at it here not long ago, a little old lead coffin, beat out thing. That's where his bones are supposed to have laid. They have the museum there, and I looked at it and said, that's where Joseph's bones laid. When Moses picked them up and took them with him. And every Hebrew looking in there and say, someday Amen. it's going to be changed down here. We're going out. The prophet that had the beautiful coat, the one that represented Christ in every way, as we had last night's lesson, he said, because he banked on what God told Abraham, there you are, I'm still banking the same thing tonight. What God told Abraham, I'll save you in your seed. I believe it. Someday you're going out of here. And they believed it. And one day, the old Joseph's bones, Moses started out. The Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, You're forgetting something, Moses. <laughs> Go down and get the, the bones of Joseph. Moses wrapped him up, and here he comes. The pillar of fire leading him on to the promised land and buried them by the side of Isaac and Jacob. Why? They know there's coming the first fruits of them that slept. They know there was coming a resurrection one of them days. They know that just one that Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And at the last day he sent up on the earth. And they know that Job had an idea where he was going to stand. So he said, bear me here. They wanted to be with Joseph and with Job. And they buried right around there in Palestine because that was the promised land. And they know the resurrection wasn't going to be in Egypt. It wasn't going to be in Europe. It wasn't going to be somewhere else. It was going to be in Palestine. So they buried him there. Along came Jesus, they, the promised one. They'd done to him what they said they would. And oh, they killed him. He died. His soul ascended into hell. Priests of the souls that were in prison, taking the keys of death and hell away from the devil, returned back on Easter morning. And as he come through paradise, he knocked at the door. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I hear him say, children. Abraham say, who is that? I'm your seed. <laughs> seed of Abraham. Daniel said, who is that? I'm the stone that was cut out of the mountain. <laughs> there they are. The Old Testament saints. Laying there, waiting to be closed up on in paradise. He opened up the door. Abraham said, are we going out? It's almost daylight on earth. Let's get ready to go. Abraham said, can we make a little whistle stop? I'd like to look the city over. <laughs> well, yes, I'm going to visit with my disciples for 40 days. And on Easter morning, he arose. And Matthew 27 says that many of the bodies of the saints that slept in the dust of the earth rose and came out of the city and appeared to many of them in the city. Amen. I can see Sarah and Abraham coming down the street and saying, Oh, honey, look there. They changed these things a little bit. Look around here how this looks. Somebody said, Who is that couple there? It seems like they're strangers. They say, We're recognized. Vanished out of their sight like he went through the wall. You know, they didn't even know see him come in. Went out. They had glorified bodies. Amen. And they appeared back on earth. Hallelujah! Our first fruits of the proof of God's power in the resurrection. Amen. There they were. Robbed and stripped principalities and tough death and hell, smothered up and rolls up on Easter morning. 
and entered into the kingdom with him. No word that said, bury me in Palestine. They know the resurrection is going to be in Palestine. Therefore, today, brother, you can have whatever you want to, all the old coal farmer religion you want to, but bury me in Christ. For those that are in Christ will God bring with him in the resurrection. Say whatever you want to, call it fanaticism, whatever you want to do, but just let me stay in him. For those that are in him's coming out of the grave on the resurrection, for God shall bring them up. He promised to do it. Amen. What difference does it make if you're getting old? Well, glory to God. What does that have anything to do with it? Closer home. Amen. Oh, glory. Go to call me Holy Roller anyhow. You might as well get started. <laughs> All right. How wonderful. That's enough to make a Holy Roller out of you. Well, how can I keep from being happy and know that's the truth? Why, well, sure I'm happy. And everybody's got that hope is bubbling up. I used to go to an old spring where I used to drink at, Junior. I used to go down there and I thought, when I was patrolling, I'd go to this old spring. I said, here's a happy thing down at Bro Mill Town. I used to look at it and I thought, well, well what makes you so happy? It's uh, just bubble, 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 bubble all the time. Best water I ever drink. I thought, well, what makes you so happy? Because stock drinks from you? No, Brother Bill, that ain't what it is. Well, what makes you bubbling all the time? Because if, uh, if uh, somebody comes down here and gets water, at, no, that ain't it. Well, maybe you just bubble because I drink that. No. I say, well, what you bubbling about? If he could talk, he'd say, Brother Bill, it isn't me a bubbling, it's something behind me pushing me, bubbling up. And when the Holy Spirit comes into a human being, there's something, gushers, fountains of water that's bubbling up into everlasting life. How can you? Jesus told the woman at the well, he that drinks this water will have everlasting life. It'll be in him. Pounds of water bubbling up into everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Exodus. Oh, my. Think of it. Everlasting life. After 10,000 million years has passed. When these old seas, which over two-thirds of this water, uh, of the earth is covered in water, are sweeping through them great dashers out there, when they roll two or three times as big as this tabernacle, bursting the ships, falling one side or the other. Some of these days, brother, they'll send heaps of high the earth until they'll weep themselves into deserts. When there's no more sea, no more moons, no more stars. Hallelujah. I will be living on and ever ever born again man and women will be living in his majestic presence on earth. Made conform to the image of his only begotten son. By his grace are we saved. No more the poet said that the love of God, how rich, how pure, how fabulous and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song. How could we keep still? Ma. Is it proof, Brother Bam? Yeah. Now, Isaac, Jacob, and now Joseph, and Joseph died. What a perfect example that was. His bones left there for a memorial. Here not long ago, don't think Billy's in back there. <clears throat> I don't say this to him. When he's around, we put a flower on his mother's grave. Decoration morning. He was crying, standing there, and I said, Billy, don't cry. Just shut your eyes. Look across the sea yonder. I said, Mother's laying there, and little sister's laying with her. But they're not there. There's an empty tomb across the sea yonder. Hallelujah, that's where I look. Just like the Hebrews looked. Someday we're going out. And someday we're going out. I never hear that ashes to ashes or dust to dust and earth to earth. But I think someday. The other day when I was preaching a funeral of an ex-sheriff here in the city, the boy had just come to Christ a few hours before dying. I seen his old gray-headed daddy reach over the casket with trembling lips the tears rolling down. Kiss that boy goodbye and almost fell into the casket. 
I heard then I turned back and he dealt the flowers. Turned back and I said, ashes to ashes and dust to dust and earth to earth. I thought, some glorious day. Some golden daybreak, Jesus will come. That's right. All right. When we go to get to the lesson, <clears throat> way down in Egypt, times had passed. Pray for me. And there, then there finally rose up a Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph. 400 years God promised to be there. And there were 420 years when they went out. Now, first chapter. From the first unto the fifth chapter, fifth verse, is Israel in Egypt. And from the seventh verse on over to the 22nd verse, deals with their bondage. Many of you has read it many, many times. I'm going to come to a short part now. Just got a, a little bit of time. Then we start in the second chapter. The preparation of deliverance. The birth of Moses. The people begin to get ready. Taskmasters beaten. Children slain. The hour of the cogs of God's prophetic wheels that ground up to the time. Listen. I want you to get this. I believe they've ground up to it again. Amen. I believe we're here. That's the reason I think things are going the way they are now. The old prophetic clocks ticked right up to the nearly the zero hour. Preached on that some time ago, and a German artist painted it. I've got it hanging in my house. A man in prayer, the Bible open, a little grease candle burning, and the clock five minutes till twelve. <coughs> on an oral painting. Preparation. Getting ready. God getting ready to do something. Now watch. When he got ready to do something, he gave a peculiar birth down in Egypt to a little old boy. No more than any other boy. It's just a man of the tribe of Levi. Went and took him a wife with Levi. And they had a little baby and they was killing all the little boy babies. But when this baby was born, there was something strange about the baby. Something happened. Predestination, foreordination. Moses didn't have nothing to do with that, but he was Moses. So they didn't fear the king's commandments. They put him in a little ark, and he was raised right up under Pharaoh's doorstep. Was that right? To become even his son. All right. Now, Moses, from the 11th verse on down to the 25th verse, is Moses identifying himself to the children of Israel. Many knows how it taken place there. He identified himself, and then when he did, he thought the brother to understand it. He was the man that was sent to, the, to bring him out from under the bondage, but they failed to understand. Is that right? And old oh, people, how a beautiful type that is of today. The very thing that's come to deliver the people, they are afraid of it. They're afraid of the deliverer. Listen. When they built the Temple of Solomon, they, uh, any of you masons here now can get this pretty good. They brought the cedars down from Lebanon. They floated them in as far as Joppa and hauled them by ox cart and so forth. You know, then they cut out all their stones all around the world. But when they come together, they were such perfect masonry. Uh, in 40 years in the building of the temple, there wasn't a buzz of a saw or a sound of a hammer. Every stone went, one was cut this way, one was cut that way, one was cut back this way, but every one of them went together. They started laying the thing, putting the building up, didn't long fine, and they found a funny looking stone. They didn't want that thing. They said, that don't belong here. And they kicked it out, threw it over the weed pile. And come to find out they built on and on and on. And come to find out the very stone they had rejected was the chief cornerstone. Jesus said so. And today, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Lutheran, the Pentecostals, everywhere around. If you don't watch out, friends, 
the real cornerstone, you're rejecting it, and the cornerstone in the building of this spiritual house is the Holy Spirit. You're afraid of it. You're afraid of fanaticism. I know we got a lot of old scarecrows and mockery. Well, if it wasn't that, there wouldn't be a real one. But there's a genuine article of the Holy Spirit in the baptism. That's true. All right. And now they've rejected us. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, well, we can't have that, Brother Branham. I said the other day, where a dean of a great college was sitting in my house. And from Billy Graham Institution, Dr. Sandon, a bunch of them sitting there. And he said, Brother Branham, we'll tell you what's the matter. He said, that's enough to convert the world. He said, I'll tell you what's the matter. He said, you got too many Pentecostals and holy rollers in your meeting. That's what the complaint is. I said, will you sponsor? <laughs> well, of course we'd have to. Yeah, I thought so. No, you wouldn't. Certainly you wouldn't. That's exactly. Them big churches can go ahead and have their theology and their crow about this and crow about that and stand off and look with their DDs behind them and things like that. And some of them know more about God than a rabbit will know about putting on snowshoes. That's right. Oh, the old, certainly they know all the Greek words and they know the, their education. God isn't known by theology or education. God's known by faith. Amen. Knowledge takes a man away from God. Faith brings him to God. That's what separated him from God in the Garden of Eden. He went to the tree of knowledge. In the very baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's brought life to the people. The reason of Pentecostals and the Holy Rollers, as you call them, receive me on the subject of divine healing. Oh, sure, kings and potentates, they hear about it. They say, come over here. The Lord being merciful heals them. It's like that. That's true. But all the rest of it, when he talks about eternal life, they belong to the Anglican church. They belong to this, that, there. They belong to church. That don't have nothing to do with it. You belong in a church don't mean that with God. Unless you're born again, there's only one church. And that's them that are born into the body of Jesus Christ by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Let me tell you, my brother, there's only one way to get into Christ. That's not by shaking hands, neither by water baptism, by sprinkling, by stop eating meat, by keeping Sabbath day, by quit smoking, chewing, drinking, swearing, all these things. That's not the way into Christ. Amen. Smoking cigarettes, drinking whiskey, running around with the other with uh, women unlawfully, and all these things that you do—that's not sin. That's, that's not sin. Cussing, swearing, drinking—that's not sin. That's the attributes of sin. You're a sinner. What makes you do it? But that isn't sin. That's the attributes of it. Just like now, this is going to hurt you. But I'm responsible with God's Word. Well, you discuss it any time. Here's where you Pentecostal people have made your mistake, many of you sitting here, of teaching the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, being the Holy Ghost. Why, well, speaking in tongues is all right, but that is an attribute. Amen. That is the Holy Ghost. That's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost is the love of God. I can prove it by the Bible. Though I speak with tongue of men and angels and have not loved it, profit me nothing. Amen. If you want an apple tree and just got an apple, you're a long ways from getting the tree. See, it's an attribute. Sin, the reason you curse, smoke, drink, get angry, and fly off of the handle and things like that is because you are a sinner. That's not sin, it's because you're a sinner. Jesus said, the scripture says this, He that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. If you believe... You don't do those things because the life of Christ is in you. And if you do do them, it's because that you are a sinner and you're not a believer, though you profess to be, yes, you are not. The tree is known by its fruit. Now that, let that soak just a minute while I read. That's right. That's what Jesus said. The tree is known by the fruit it bears. A corrupt tree does not bring forth good fruit. All right. Way down. Here they come. Time of deliverance. Moses is born. 
raised up the Pharaoh's doorstep. Come out, thought the children would realize that he was the guy to do it. But did they do it? No, sir. They said, who made you a ruler over us? Will you slay us as you did the Egyptians? And Moses fled. All right. Moses rejected of his brethren. Beginning at the 21st verse of the second chapter. We're going to stop just a minute on this. I'm just trying to give you a background. We just got a few minutes left. Maybe we have to finish up tomorrow night. Notice he was rejected of his brethren. And he went out into the land of Midian and married a Gentile woman. A perfect type of Christ was Moses. Is that right? All those patriarchs were Jesus Christ living pre-life. Moses born under persecution. Just as this killing all the babies in the time of Moses, Jesus, when he came, they killing all the babies to get him. Is that right? The devil trying to catch Moses. The devil trying to catch Jesus. He was trying. I can see Jesus when he went up down there and knocked on the door down there in hell that morning. Hallelujah. I don't know if this ain't him to teach, I guess, tonight. When I can see Jesus when he died at Calvary, ascended, went down there and seen all those people back in there weeping and wailing and carrying on, said, you ought to listen to the prophets. Amen. He preached to the souls that were in prison. You had Enoch. You had the prophets. You had the laws. Why didn't you listen to it? They didn't. Holes went the door. Went out of hell. Knocked at the door. Satan said, who's there? He said, come on the door. <laughs> oh, my. I'm just giving drama, of course. Walked up the door and pulled open the door and said, Who are you? Why, well, I said, I'm Jesus Christ. Oh! So you finally got here, did you? <laughs> I've been after you for a long time, boy. I know you have. Now look, I thought I had you when I killed Abel. I thought I had you when I killed Moses. I thought I had you when I did all, all these things when I got John the Baptist. I thought I had you sure. But now I got you. <laughs> You're here in my possession. I hear Jesus Christ say, I am the virgin born son of God. I came from the ivory palaces of my father. And I came to the earth. And on the earth is bathed this morning with my blood. And I gave and paid the price of death, sin, and hell. Give me those keys. Hallelujah. I'm taking over from here on. You kept the people in bondage. You kept them in fear and everything else. But I'll take over from this on. Hallelujah. Took him off and hung him on his own side, pushed him back in hell and walked away. Amen. Amen. The mighty conqueror since he rent the veil into. Lo, be a holy men full of you. The mighty conqueror. Rose up that I'm he that was dead and is alive again. And I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. Hallelujah. He that hears my words and people don't even send me half everlasting life. I've got the keys of the resurrection. I'll raise him up in the last day. That satisfies me. Amen. Amen. I am he. Amen. Oh, my. Moses, rejected by his own brethren. Jesus was rejected by his own brethren. Joseph was rejected by his own brethren. See Jesus living down in there? That Spirit of God coming out to perfection. And here's where it was perfection in this man. That's right. He was in Moses. Sure he was. Rejected of his brothers and was an alien in his own country and took a Gentile wife. Hallelujah! Amen. Two sons again. Hey, now, I'll get to that right at the end of these lessons right about Sarah. Dear Sunday, now two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Two sons again. Is that right? Rejected by his brothers, like Jesus Christ was rejected of his brothers, sent the Holy Spirit, rejected of the brethren, and come over, and now is getting a Gentile bride. Give her, like Joseph, rejected by his brothers, took a Gentile bride. Oh, my. Now, a second chapter. The call of Moses, the burning bush. Oh, I wish we had time to go in there. We haven't. Just a few seconds now. Then we'll, then we'll try. When you get tired, raise up your hand. I'll, I'll quit. Honest, I will. 
Look. Oh, brother, this is like cornbread and beans. It sticks to your ribs. It'll hold you somewhere. You can do a good day's work for the Lord tomorrow. You might meet the devil and say, I know where I'm standing. Not because it shield run down my back, because thus saith the Lord. Amen. Move off, Satan. I'm taking over now. Amen. Now we are the sons of God. Mm. When? Now. Tomorrow night? No, right now. Now we are the sons of God. Now we're seated together in heavenly places. Now is the Holy Spirit here. When? Now. Now we have eternal life. Will you get eternal life when you die, Brother Brandon? I have it now. I now possess it. How? Jesus Christ said so. Thus saith the Lord to move away, death. Move away, Satan. You have no more bonds to me. Old Paul is building a chop block out there. Say, you know what it is, boy? Go chop your head off. It is. I fought a good fight. I finished the course that kept the faith. Hey, what are you going to say before you die? Death said, Ah, oh, you little hook nosed Jew. I don't just beat the stripes and let you down with my soul for you down this, that, or the other. But I've got you. He looked old. Death said, I'll make you shiver and shake. He said, Death, where is your sting? The grave out there in the mud, that Roman soldier throwing up some mud, they're piling down in there. Said, I'll hold you. Said, oh, death, where is your stain? Grave, where is your victory? But thanks be to God. The grave said, I'll hold you. I'll mold you. I'll canker you. The worms will eat you up. Your bones will turn back to dust. But Paul said, look at that empty tomb out of her. I'm in him. Hallelujah. I'll rise again on that morning and receive a crown that the glory of the righteous judge will give me. Not only them, but every one of them, even them in the Branham Tabernacle, to love his appearing. Amen. Sure. The devil's nothing but a scarecrow. He just scares you into something. He has no legal rights at all. He was stripped of every right, principalities, he spoiled everything when he died at Calvary. Here he is, coming down now. Moses had fled is out on the back side of the desert, herding Jethro sheep. My forty years. He'd been out there and he had a couple of kids. Walking around out there and his wife was a little she was a high tempered little thing, and Moses had some temper too. So I imagine they had a big time out on the back of that desert, don't you? God knows how to tame you down. <laughs> yes. So one morning I see him with an old crooked stick. Hobbling along there. <laughs> Eighty years old with white whiskers hanging down like his hair hanging down. He looked over to one side. So that's a strange sight. Looked again and said, What a tree burn up? So I believe we'll just turn aside. <laughs> you know, sometimes you hear a lot of noise. Just turn aside to see what it is and get saved. A lot of fire, you know. Yeah, it gets to burning the Holy Ghost fire. It gets to burning people. Turn around and say, what's the matter with that? Now Moses began to draw and say, what do I think? Don't burn it up. Been burning there for a half hour. It ain't burned yet. Walk up and said, well, now just walk up and see what it's all about. And a voice spoke out of there and said, take off your shoes. The ground where you stand is holy ground. And I didn't say take off. I, Moses said, I'll take off my hat. He said, shoes. So I reached down and slipped off his shoe. <laughs> so who are you, Lord? Said Moses. Now this beginneth the third chapter. Goes down from the first verse down to about the twelfth. Said Moses, I've heard the groans of my people. And I remember my promise. Oh, hallelujah. I remember my promise with Abraham. I've heard the cries and groanings. I've come down to deliver him. Amen. Come down to keep his word. Some of these days, the old graves down the tombstone setting sideways on grandma's grave. That don't make any difference. I remember my promise. I've come down to deliver him. I don't care. Let it come. Don't make any difference to me. Hallelujah. I know who's guiding the ship, don't you? you Set still. I've come down to deliver him. What are you going to do? Moses is going to send you, oh, Lord, send me. I can't do it, Lord. Oh, yes, I've put you in this world for that purpose. Well, I'm 80 years old. I'm kind of stiff in the back. I may have arthritis. I'm a, not an eloquent man. I, I can't speak very well. Now, who made the mouth of man? He said, Lord, if you'll show me your glory, I'll go. <laughs> Amen. 
Don't get scared. That word means so be it. See? Show me your glory and I'll go. I like to see a little extra kind of glory, don't you? Yes, sir. Show me your glory, Lord. Now, what, what is your glory, Lord? Moses, what is that in your hand? It's a stick, Lord, an old crooked stick. He said, throw it on the ground. He throw it on the ground, turn to a surf, and he jumped back. He said, pick him up in the tail. He did it, turned back a stick. He said, now, Moses, what's that in your... I said, take your hand, put it in your bosom. He did, over his heart, pulled it out. It was white with leprosy. See? It means the conscience of man, the heart of man is white. With leprosy, very thoughts of his mind is leprosy, sin. He put it back in his bosom and pulled it out again. What had to be done? When he come back out, it was white, cleaned off. It's like a baby's hand, like the other hand. He's seen God's glory. What is God's glory then? Miracles, signs, wonders, and divine healing. Show me your glory, Lord. When he's ready to deliver his people... A Moses comes along, the Holy Spirit, and shows signs, wonders, and divine healing. Amen. <laughs> right. Then he looked at his hand and said, My, and watch. This was a judgment rod. That was a rod we'll find out tomorrow night's lesson on how that rod did wave over Egypt. That wasn't mo that was God's judgment rod. And the hand that holds God's judgment must be cleansed. Amen. 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 A cleansed hand from his leprosy. He picked it up. Said, now, get on down there in Egypt. Your brother's on the road up here and he'll be a prophet to you and you'll be like God to him. Here goes Moses. Come over there. I said, Jethro, I got to leave you today. Grabbed up an old mule and put a halter on him like that and set his wife on the Straddle this old mule with a young and on each hip. Here she went. Could you imagine that? An old man, 80 years old, whiskers, long beard, long hair, a crooked stick in his hand, leading an old donkey with a woman sitting on it with two kids going down to take over Egypt. <laughs> Could you imagine a sight like that? Going down to do what, Moses? Some of them, here he goes. My eyes had to be tired. Come on, Zipporah. That's his wife, you know, pulling the old donkey to along. and say, come on, we're going down to Egypt. Going down to take over. Egypt was like Russia. The biggest mechanized units, the greatest army in the world was in Egypt. They could wed the whole world, whipped to the ground. And Moses was going down to take over. An old man with a stick in his hand, a wife sitting on a mule, with a kid on each hip. Here she was going. They were going down to take over. Why? God had promised. Amen. Glory to God. That's the same way Kadesh Barnea. God had promised them. Joshua he said, we can do it because God said so. Amen. There they are. Going down to Egypt. And now watch how neglectful a man can get. In the end, God met him down here. In the end. And would have slayed him. And Zipporah went and took a sharp rock and circumcised her two children with a sharp rock and throwed the foreskin before Moses and said, You're a bloody husband to me. Only save Moses' life. What was Moses doing? Moses got in such a hustle and bustle of the day till he was in such a, a place to go down there, he forgot the seal of circumcision. And that's where we are doing today. That's where the holiness churches are failing. We've got so much time. The Lord has given us a lot of money. We're building great big churches and big spires and putting plush seats and pipe organs until we forgot the seal of God, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. True. God sent us a Zipporah. That's right. Circumcision. Every male in Egypt uh, of Israel that wasn't circumcised was cut off. And circumcision was the seal of the promise. And circumcision of the Old Testament is the baptism of the Holy Ghost of the New. And every man outside the baptism of the Holy Ghost will be cut off. There you are. God be merciful. I, I know I'm wearing you out. But I'm just having such a time. I, well, maybe I have to stop. All right.
Just start tomorrow night at the fourth verse, then, the fourth chapter. Jehovah, in the last part of the fourth year, third, makes his name known. I am the I am. Said, who am I going to say sent me? Said, I am. Said, the people won't believe it. Said, tell them I am sent you. I am. Not I was, I will be, but I am. That's present tense. The Jews one day were standing there drinking water and rejoicing and talking about the man of the eating the wilderness. And Jesus stood in the midst of the people, St. John 6, and cried. And it's a feast. And they said, well, uh, our fathers uh, eat man in the wilderness. And he said, they're everyone dead. He said, but I am the bread of life that come from God out of heaven, the tree of life from the Garden of Eden, if you wish. I am the bread of life from, the, from heaven. And if a man eats this bread and drinks this blood, drinks my blood and eats my flesh, has everlasting life, and I'll raise him up for the last days. They said, this man blasphemeth. How's he going to give us his body to eat? He said, well, we know we believe Moses. Moses is our, is our prophet. We believe Moses. And our fathers have sat in the wilderness for 40 years with manna. He said, I know that. He said, I know that, but every one of them's dead. He said, but I am the bread of life. Amen. Why? They said, well, you mean to tell me that he was a rock that was in the wilderness. He was a manna that was in the wilderness. He was a showbread in the temple. Oh, Amen. he was a waters in Jordan. Glory! Amen. He was the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He was he that was, which is, and shall come. He was before there was a world. He'll be when there is no world. The root and offspring of David, the morning star. The lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. Both root and offspring of David. Hallelujah. Before David, in David, and after David. Glory. I believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. He was more than a prophet. He was more than a good man. He was God. And veiled in flesh. God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Amen. That's who he was. We'll get into that in the next few nights. Who he was. That's the reason you can't have faith because you don't know who he was. Amen. Why they said you say that you saw Abraham and you're not 50 years old yet. The man wasn't but 30. His worry and his services have drawn him down. He said you're not a man over 50 years old. And you say you've seen Abraham who's been dead for eight or 900 years. Listen. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Hallelujah. I am Jehovah. He's Jehovah Manassas. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's a Je all, he, all the redemptive names of Jehovah was in him, and in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. There he is. I've come down to deliver him. I'm declaring my name. Tell him that will be a memorial through all generations that I am the I am. Amen. Not the I was or I will be. I am. The same God was there that night is here tonight. Now I'm going before you. I'm going to send my angel. And he's going to be in a pillar of fire. Now I'm going to send him before you now as a pillar of fire and he'll lead you. A pillar of fire. So be like a pillar. A pillar of fire shall go before you to lead you. The I am will be in that pillar of fire. Now, to the Branham Tabernacle, to you who are associated and know these truths. Did you know that same pillar of fire is with us tonight? Amen. Amen. You remember having its picture taken down yonder and how it's swept across the world now? The same pillar of fire that followed Moses back there in the burning bush? What is it? The any scholar here dares, if I have been slopping along here with these words and things, I do know where I'm standing. <laughs> I got my head screwed on right, I believe, by the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, any scholar here knows that that angel who followed the children of Israel through the wilderness was the angel of the covenant. And the angel of the covenant was Jesus Christ. Moses esteemed the riches of Christ greater treasures than all of Egypt. Is that right? Sure! 
the angel of the covenant, then what is it here with us? They may say we got lost our mind, we're this, that, or a bunch of holy rollers or something. Maybe they might say it, but God himself has vindicated himself in the same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel is leading us right on today. Hallelujah! Glory to God! The same one was with Jesus Christ back at her when he stood and he said to them Pharisees, this there, there told the woman at the well where her secret sins was and so forth is operating in our midst now. He that was, which is, and will come. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm looking for him. Are you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All the guessing's gone. Oh, my when I survey the wondrous cross where on the Prince of Glory died, all my fame I count but lost. Poor wretched. Oh, my sinner friend. How can you stand to see that great church out there in its four shadows heaping up at that pillar of fire to lead them? And look right back here right today. How many's got the picture? Let's see your hand. How many like to have the picture? Let's see your hands raised up. I'll have them tomorrow night here to show you. All right. There it is. A a vindicated 30,000 people, critics standing there. I said, I don't claim to be a healer. You know I don't. I only speak of the truth. When I was born in a little Kentucky cabin up there, the angel of the Lord come in the window and stood there as a pillar of fire. I said, God has proved that. If I tell the truth, God will vindicate the truth. If I'm a liar, God will have nothing to do with me. And about that time, she went, Whew. here he comes. The American Photographer Association, all in there, look like Times Collar and all them. The American Photographer Association shot the picture of it. Said, I believe it's psychology. We've seen it before, but I believe. And they took it home, and there the light struck the lens. They took it to George J. Lacey. They put it under everything they could, and now it hangs in Washington, D.C., in the hall of fame. Hallelujah. What is it, Jesus Christ, with that bunch that they call holy rollers? God bless your heart. Ever famous painters ever painted. First had to go through the hall of critics. The man who painted the last supper there, it went through the hall of critics. Why they criticized it cost him his lifetime. But now it hangs in the hall of fame. It has to go through the hall of critics. Brother and sister, when we started in this what they call this Holy Ghost religion, way back in our years ago we had to get little old stables somebody's house, a little storefront somewhere, and you stood on the outside, the sinners chewed chewing gum, laughed and made fun, called us holy rollers, and was slept in jail and everything else. That's right. They've been beat, they've been made fun of. A little old preacher sat in my house the other day, that they turned him out of a city, and him and his wife to feed his babies. They'd sleep out in our blankets, wet blankets, and hang them up in the trees, let them dry out of the morning. And they'd go down the railroad track, picking up a grain of corn at a time, had a little skillet, they beat it up with a rock. And they live for 12 or 14 days at a time on beet corn. My old manager, God bless his heart, old brother Bosworth, laying out in Durban, Africa tonight, praying for me to come there, laid down in Texas with his back beat into stripes. When he's threatened to cut his throat and everything else, when he walked with a broken wrist trying to pack his suitcase, beat for preaching the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Wandering about in sheepskins and goatskins and destitute and desert places of whom the world is not worthy to receive. The big churches made fun and pointed their fingers. They said we were holy rollers. When they built the, uh, laid their cornerstone there, they said they'll turn that little old thing into a garage. It's been 20 years ago and the Holy Ghost still lives here. Hallelujah. That's right. And what they said was fanaticism and everything, kings and monarchs across the world. That's all. Great man has been healed. The powers of God has swept the world around. So now we stand millions strong. Hallelujah. One of these mornings, she's went to the critics. They said it would burn out. They said to me down here, said, oh, Billy, you lost your mind. That's all there is to it. Even my own mother-in-law said, well, the boy's gone crazy. But if I am, I'm having a wonderful time. Let me tell you something, brother. Listen to this, and I'll say this with respect. Hallelujah! All hell can stop it. It's ordained of Jesus Christ to be so, and it will be. But upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How? What is it? What kind of a church? 
flesh and blood has not revealed it to thee, Peter. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed it to you. Spiritual revelation by the Holy Ghost of the Word of God. On this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. She's moving on. Now, brother, she's been made fun of and persecuted and pushed back and everything. One of these glorious mornings. Hallelujah. The great master who stands in glory, pointing out his servants, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, not by theology, not by grammar, not by these other things, but by simple, holy, unadulterated faith in the Son of God and what he said in his word. He's painting a picture. He's painting a picture. What is it? A Holy Ghost filled church that he foreordained before the beginning of the world to appearing under in his glory. And some of these mornings he'll sweep down to from the heavens. Hallelujah! Like a great magnet, and he'll pick up that little church that's been persecuted, hanging out in the hall of fame when she goes to the sky, shouting this robe of flesh, I'll drop and rise and seize the ever lasting prize. Shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank thee tonight. Don't know what's the matter. Just couldn't get into this lesson somehow. The Holy Spirit moving, bursting out, moving over. Oh, we thank Thee. Thank Thee from the depths of our heart for Your love and power. Thank You, Lord. Thank You for our humble people who in this great dark age down here, in this great time of self-satisfying, oh, haughty, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times these things would be. Second Timothy 3 in your word said they'd be heady, high-minded, no more than somebody else. High-minded, incontinent, fierce, and despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. God, you spoke in that day that you'd have a little church said, Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good will to give you the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for ever opening my poor eyes. Me, a poor, blinded wretch, hot gutter in sin, born in a sinful family, reared up over a whiskey barrel. Oh, but God, how you protected and helped and blessed and set aside. How can I ever express my feelings to you, Lord? Oh, God, just let this be just the beginning, Lord, that I can go again to the corners of the world's everywhere proclaiming the message of deliverance and salvation. God, shake this little old church like never before. May the Holy Ghost get a hold of every person here, cause them to fast and pray and lay on their face day and night, screaming out, Lord, until the old-fashioned revival breaks out here, Lord, and sweeps all out to here and sends in an old-fashioned time that will bring men and women back to God. Grant it, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand? Oh, I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Tears all past home at last ever to rejoice. Hallelujah. I look down along here, I remember an old man that used to sit there when I'd be preaching them messages, cry and wipe the tears out of his eyes and put his arms around me. Some bright day I'll go and see him. I look over there and see another one who sat yonder, an old sister Weber. I remember those different ones and Sister Snelling that used to sing in a choir, a little red-headed brother George sat back there Oh, yeah! Hallelujah! <laughs> They're carried away out in the bosoms. <laughs> Hallelujah! Sealed in the kingdom of God. I watched them when they went. I seen little brother George going there. He kept looking through the door. He going, <sighs> they said, where is, what's going on? He prayed for his little nephew tonight. He's sick. 
And then he looked down there and he said, kept, they said he's watching for Brother Bill. He wasn't watching for me. First thing you know, he turned his head over to the east. He said, oh, Jesus, I knew you would come after me. Reached out his hands and died. Went out to me. God, hallelujah. Oh, my. Let's go home. You love him. I wonder if there's a man or woman in here say, I'll like to know him in the fullness of his power of his resurrection. Raise your hand. God bless you, lady. God bless you. God bless you. You wonder why I'm waiting on this altar call. I have a reason for it. All right, raise your hand. I'd like to know him in the power of his resurrection. But uh, resurrected power, brother, I don't mean something you have to dig and pull and try. I mean just throw yourself loose and God done set you away on her somewhere. Where it's just such a pleasure to live for him. There's nothing in the... Why, the other things is just as dead as, a, as 12 o'clock, see? Nothing, no desire at all, no condemnation to them. It's in Christ Jesus. My, those old things of the world, you don't have to quit them. You know, there ain't nothing to quit. It just quits you. It just it simply is not there no more. It just goes away. Amen. How many loves the Lord? Say amen. amen. Say it real out. Amen. amen. All right. Take the name of Jesus with you, child. Turn around and shake hands now. Man of war. Shake hands with somebody near you. Say, I'm glad to meet you here in the tabernacle. And straighten up again. Mutation everywhere you go. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. Oh, Father. Quietly listen. At the name of Jesus, bowing for me, prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, precious name, oh, how sweet. Isn't it sweet? Everything in heaven named it, everything on earth named it, Jesus. Precious name, precious name, oh, how sweet. Oh. Shall we bow our heads? Great teacher, we sat up on the mount one day, and you said, after this manner, you shall all pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good night. The Lord bless you. Amen.